Hello and welcome back again to Rage Gaming and more Diablo 4 Season 5 talk. Although, this is going to be one of my final kind of discussion videos on the topic for Season 5, as this is kind of my final review. The season is not over per se, there are a couple things that we expect to come, but we are looking ahead now to the DLC and Season 6 technically, or if they're going to reset it to Season 1. But looking back at the state of Season 5 as a whole, is kind of what I want to do. So let's start with the biggest addition in Season 5, which was Infernal Hordes, the new game mode that allows us to do wave-based farming with an insane amount of mobs. In fact, the more you kill, the more there are, and some minimal min-maxing stuff where you're bouncing between specific objectives, working out which is worth actually doing and the ones you specifically ignore. Mostly in our current meta, it comes down to farming elites and Hellborn specifically, spawning as many events as you can. In general, I think this game mode has been incredible. I like the Fell Council in general, their mechanics are fun and interesting. The fact there's three of them, they're generally weak than one single boss. Something about it's very satisfying as you progress the fight and they get harder as they get low. Design wise then, I think this is fantastic, but how did it affect the gameplay overall? Well take leveling, it was absolutely incredible as addition for that. Insane XP, but the challenge for it was hard enough that you couldn't just do it immediately. Tier 2 and Tier 3 specifically when you're leveling is a big jump from level 75 to 100 and the difficulty that provided. Though obviously there were some imbalances like Devastators dealing way too much damage and them actually addressing that now. If you could overcome the challenge, the time to XP was insane. And then as you're getting into tier 3 and above, you're now getting that greater chest which does have that guaranteed greater affix drop in it. Not to mention all the new uniques in this location and the fact there's that chest at the end for gold farm. If you just want to go clear it out and spend all your aether on gold, that's a completely reasonable thing. And the result means we don't have to farm whispers again like we're doing for gold in season 4. I hope to never have to do that again because it was not fun. This season by comparison, I have more gold than I need. Not only because of the actual gold farm of Infernal Hordes, but because the value of items and the trade system in general is working well. I'd love to see in the expansion an in-game trade system that's proper and good, like an auction house or something, instead of having to use other websites, third-party websites like D4 Trade and so on. But leaning into that function this season, I've had more gold than I needed, and it's been a dream compared to Season 4, where I never had enough. Not only that, Infernal Hordes also introduced the resource chest, so you could spend all your Aether on that instead, and that's been a dream too. Not only just to get your gems initially, all the shards for that, but it also offers master working mats and summoning materials, and that means farming tons tormented bosses is a lot less of a pain to actually get the materials. All of this in one new game mode. Optimal leveling, optimal gearing, new gear at that, brilliant gold farm, an insane resource farm at that. Mechanically really enjoyable from start to finish. They have honestly smashed it with Infernal Hordes. I think it's a fantastic addition to the game and I look forward to seeing it stick around as an end game content that we do from here on. How they will rebalance it though is going to be a big question because obviously it's a little bit too good compared to other stuff. You take a look at pits and pits don't matter nearly as much. A lot of people aren't even doing them. At this point they're just from showcasing how strong your build is. It's not that pit is completely worthless. It's about 600 Aether per farm of Horde in good time to be equal to the master working materials you're going to get from, say, a 101 pit farm at good pace. So it's definitely not a joke, but it's definitely worse than Hordes on average and for your average player for sure. So I would like to see the pit change in terms of the value for pushing higher level pits. That's a dangerous line to walk, I'm sure, because you don't want to make really high pits actually be how you get, I don't know, mythic uniques or something really valuable like greater affixes. But at the same time, those that are pushing hard should be rewarded, right? Maybe a guaranteed greater affix at the end of a pit, just like we have Infernal Hordes. High level pits at a certain point are much harder than Infernal Hordes at tier 8, that's for sure. So don't they deserve the same kind of treatment? I think so. Balancing pit and Infernal Hordes to both be worth doing then is something that I hope to see in the future. Now, do I even dare mention the gauntlet and the two people that play that these days? Honestly, I didn't really get into it myself. I think 90% of the player base played it and were, were decided it's not for them, I guess. If they made it more rewarding, I think that would backfire. If people aren't interested in the gauntlet mechanically, perhaps because of how sour they are, how long it took for them to actually put it in the game, or just the mechanics of it not being fun, I don't know. Gauntlet, I think they should just push aside. It's a lost cause, and they should lean more into things like Infernal Hordes and new mechanics of that nature that seems to work better. But it is funny to see all the build-up for Gauntlet, and then it just be completely forgotten and pushed aside 
side, maybe that's for the best. Now, obviously, also in the new season, we got a new story. Uh, and by that, I mean, we got a new rep farm. We love rep farm. They introduced that, I think it was in season three, the rep farm mechanic. And all they've really done is enhanced that and now leaned more into that being our quote unquote seasonal story. Incredibly forgettable, irrelevant basically. But the rep system is more forgiving than ever with the fact that we can get rep from anywhere instead of having to farm specifically Helltide for the entire season. So I do appreciate that change. I think their rep farm was better than it's ever been. But yeah, I don't know. Season story is just not hitting for me. Okay, so another big topic where it was a big change was the Mythic Uniques, which is basically the Uber Uniques actually given an official name in-game, and they gave them a new color, which is this bright purple, and kind of overhauled a lot of the Uniques themselves. I think this was fantastic. Say, getting them. Having it so the Torment bosses across the board actually drop them is just a completely logical thing. The fact that it only came from Duriel and Undariel, just too single-minded, basically meant that all anyone ever did was farm Duriel. Now we can farm any of them as long as it's tormented. Then we can actually get those tormented summons a lot better now with the improved summoning system. Half the Stygian stones, one instead of two, is a big deal. The fact that we're getting Stygian stones for Infernal Hordes means they're actually dropping. That's great. So farming the tormented bosses is nowhere near as much of a chore because of the variety option that you have and the fact that it's less of a pain to get the materials to do it. Now, the fact that the mythic uniques seem to drop at a greater rate than ever before is an interesting topic. I have seen some of the hardcore grinders, whether they're YouTubers, streamers, or just hardcore grinders, I've seen them say that they're now dropping too easily. And they're even suggesting that they shouldn't be the top roll. Do you remember that change with mythic uniques or uber uniques? They could no longer drop with low rolled or medium rolled affixes. They're all the top roll. I have seen people call for maybe they should be RNG again instead of just always a top roll. Personally, I disagree with that. I think it was about right this season. People can actually get them without fully no lifing. I spent the first like 10 days of this season just hardcore playing this game all the time and I managed to get two and craft one. That's what I needed mostly for the season. I put in the time, I really played to death, I got what I wanted, I'm satisfied. Is that not a good thing? And I could imagine someone who's even harder of a hardcore grinder than me, who's gonna play not for 10 days straight, but they're just gonna play for like the three months straight. Yeah, mythic uniques, they're gonna get them easily. But is that bad? Right now, it feels more balanced and satisfying to your average player than ever before. I think it's in a good place. I do also agree that they shouldn't push it further and make it even easier. But I think, yeah, it's in a good place. I wouldn't really change it beyond what we've seen in this season, at least for now. On the other note, new uniques changed too, not just mythic uniques. Many of them were remade or, you know, updated. They gave them much better affixes to compete with tempering items. Since in season four, that was a big problem. Uniques were mostly unused because tempering is so impactful. So they rebalanced it with that. I think overall, it was a big success. Although, even though they introduced some new uniques that looked awesome in the PTR, and then they hyper over nerfed them like that helm they added. Hopefully some of the new uniques that they did add can get some more buffs to make them more relevant. Some of them though have been in standout successes like the bone spirit boots or say the rogues with that totem dropping sword overall i think it has been a success just more tweaks needed and that's fair enough other core changes did happen this season like enchanting being cheaper no longer needing the same resources tempering in general being more forgiving i believe it's greater affix items that get more rerolls they also changed hell tide a little bit in general that's just more forgiving profane mind cages also they can now stack up to three times to get 30 levels above you which was that xp change as well making killing higher level enemies than yourself actually worth it again and even tier one and two changed where you only need two hearts instead of three to farm the ritual which is a cool thing too. Lots of minor little stuff then based on feedback or just generally making the game a bit smoother. It's reaching that really good point now. The big divisive thing that I think is an important topic though is class balance. It's something I've covered recently, what's the best build for every class and how the class is doing compared to one another. And while pit doesn't really matter, when I was looking at that, wow were the rankings close. Sorcerer, Rogue, Druid and Necromancer all within one or two tiers of the current top clear compared to one another. While Barbarian, undeniably the worst class of the season, unfortunately, down like 15 ranks below. So that gives you a showing, a fair understanding of the relevant power of the top build of each class compared to one another, but it does not give you a fair showing of the fun and the current state of the class, which I think is very different. The fact that Necromancer players, the player base of that, has dropped off a cliff, despite them being up there in the top clears of the pit, says a lot on that topic. I am a Necromancer main, and I do think this season's been one of the worst to play a Necromancer, just in terms of fun. Why is that? Well, Bone Spirit requires an extreme amount of gear to 
get functional and then optimal gear that you continuously maintain to reach higher levels of play. I create content and guides on Necromancer. I'm comfortable doing that. I put the time in to really think about that. But say making guides for people, I found it really hard because ultimately I've got to tell them, look, this is what you need. You have to work it out yourself and then maintain your gear as you go, working that out continuously as yourself. For many, that's going to be enjoyable. For a lot, it would seem, they don't like that. Further, the playstyle of Bone Spirit is kind of awkward. It's very start-stop. It's kind of a setup build, as you will. And that's a less popular build than, say, just go, 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 never stop dealing damage. A setup build also does not really work in Infernal Hordes, where you're meant to permanently go, go, go. Against weaker enemies grouping them and blasting them, it's actually counterintuitive. It's actually a problem and slow. Farming high Aether as Bone Spirit build, even if it's really strong DPS-wise, is actually difficult. Something about it is just a bit clunky for your average player, it would seem, because again, a lot of them, the player base has dropped. It's not like they don't have other options, like Blood Surge is doing great, but that's kind of a one button build. And then all the stuff they did with Minion Necromancer last season, they nerfed it by messing with Shadow in some extreme ways, killing a lot of builds tied to that, Infinite Mist and Minion builds in general. They added new cool mobile mechanics that we weren't really able to use. They did a lot for Sever, and then, yeah, Shadow builds aren't doing great this season. Basically, the balancing of the class needs some serious love. It's too single-minded on something like Bone Spirit that a lot of people just don't seem to enjoy. You could say similar for Barbarian. Whether it was strong or not, ultimately its top two builds right now appear to be Bash Barb, which is basically single target, terrible AoE, or Whirlwind with Dust Devils, which is pretty cool and amazing for AoE, but terrible for single target. So, they feel clunky when they're trying to do this content or that content, whatever build they're doing. Meanwhile, you look at something like Druid that has one build that's kicking butt and is fun, thankfully, and can do a lot, the Storm Landslide build. And that's been their saving grace because it can do everything and it is fun and it's doing well. But it's kind of their only meta option. Meanwhile, you look at Rogue and Sorcerer by comparison, are doing incredible. Sorcerer has multiple top tier meta builds for incredible output. Rogue has multiple top tier builds for incredible meta output. Of course, you've got the top picks with Rogue with, say, Andariel's Barrage being just generally the best at doing that thing. Or Sorcerer with Lightning Spear. Take Lightning Spear recently being nerfed at the top levels. They had a pick clear of 157, and now their top pick clear is like 152, 153, which is roughly where Druid, Necro, and Rogue are. So they took the strongest build in the game and tweaked it just enough to put it in line with everyone else. That was really well done. So Sorcerer and Rogue have multiple great options, and the power of them is incredible. The variety of the playstyle is great, and they hit that class fantasy really well. Meanwhile, Druid, Necromancer, Barbarian. Druid just has one thing, and I think Druid's in danger in, you know, Season 6 or the DLC, where Spiritborn's coming, and that's taking the place of the kind of shaman idea. So I hope to see in the DLC that Druid becomes more druidy. And I hope to see in the DLC that Necromancer has some kind of overhaul with its base mobility and their lack of it, and minions in general being worked into the Necromancer's kit, rather than being one specific build that maybe is relevant this season, maybe not. And obviously they've got to work out Barbarian and its scaling because they over nerfed it this season, so that it's not like the top or one of the top classes every damn season since the start of the game. This is the first season where Barb just hasn't been near or at the top, and while it's about time they're not at the top per se, I don't want to see them not having fun either. But yeah, overall, I think it has been a great season and a good step forward. Class balance certainly has been messy for some classes, like some classes needing a real facelift in the expansion, which I am hopeful for. But the new content they added in Infernal Hordes and all the stuff that it does for the meta and progress of the game has been incredible. In the DLC, they're promising a kind of progression overhaul with your Paragon, with leveling and loads of stuff like that, comparable to what they did with the itemization update in Season 4. I thought this season as a stepping stone between those two would be a low point and it has not been so I think that's a huge success but yeah that's my general thoughts and everything let me know what you think hopefully the DLC turns out to be good for now then I've been hollow you've been you thank you for watching see you next time Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye